Hello friends, and thank you for joining me today on this mixed media collage painting journey where I will be painting my Art Nouveau inspired version of Artemis, the next installment in my Goddess series. For this painting, I had to make a lot of collage papers, so I used a jelly plate, and because Artemis spends much of her time in the forest, I wanted the papers to have a botanical feel, so I picked fresh leaves from my yard and got started with the base color. I went with warm, earthy colors for the base layer using Indian yellow and burnt sienna, and I did this on about 12 to 15 sheets of rice paper. The goal in my mind with these collage papers was to create an effect reminiscent of the botanical stained glass which was popular during the Art Nouveau era as seen in Tiffany lamps. One of the greatest things about using a jelly plate is that I can make a lot of papers in a short period of time and because it's acrylic paint it dries quickly allowing me to clean the jelly plate and apply the next layer with very little wait time. And for an impatient individual like myself it not only makes me happy but it saves the people around me from having to listen to a lot of disgruntled muttering. For the next layer I'm using metallic gold because well you can't have a goddess painting without it right? So I'm using Deco Art Metallics for this because it's the best gold paint that I've come across so far. However, it is still a bit transparent, which is why the base layer is so important. And as you can see, having that base layer underneath really makes that gold shine, but you can still see a little bit of those reds and yellows underneath that. And finally, we are on the last layer. I decided a combination of teal and blue violet would complement the gold nicely. So after laying down my paint, I strategically placed my botanicals onto the jelly plate and I had to work pretty quickly because you don't want the paint to completely dry before you start putting your collage papers on top. And this is the final layer. So this is really neat because the leaves actually kind of act as a stencil. And once you get the paper pressed on there really nicely and you really want to kind of go around all of the edges of the leaves to get that blue on there then you'll have these beautiful golden leaves but you'll have this teal and blue violet background so that is how I created these collage papers to get this kind of stained glass effect Okay, so on to the painting. Hopefully you watched my last video on creating the sketch for this painting and then transferring it onto this canvas using graphite paper. Although I do sketch directly onto canvas a lot of the time, this is not a regular canvas. This is a watercolor canvas, which has a much smoother surface, which is ideal for what I want to do, but it also has some drawbacks. Number one, it does not respond well to erasers. <laughs> just like watercolor paper. Number two, it is more absorbent than regular canvas, which means acrylic and acrylic mediums seem to dry even faster on it. Now, onto the benefits. You can layer quickly, and it's perfect for painting with acrylic inks, which is what I'm starting with here. Watered down acrylic inks are great for staining the canvas, and because they are mixed with water, you have time to remove paint where the highlights will be. Using washed out colors is also helpful when you're not sure what your color scheme is ultimately going to be and you don't want to commit to any dark or vibrant colors yet. I went with earthy colors like a mix of yellow ochre and burnt sienna for the skin. Then a watered down burnt umber for the hair. At this point, I'm still testing out colors and using very light washes with inks in order to figure out where I'm going, because even though the elements are already drawn out on the canvas, nothing is ever set in stone. Sketches and drawings are great as a blueprint, however, not every element of a black and white sketch that you've come up with translates well to a colorful painting, so decisions often have to be made during the painting process about what to keep and what needs to change. Now that the first washes have dried, I can start applying undiluted inks to the darkest parts of the face, because there is nothing better or more satisfying than painting in a good nostril. It was important for me to have a good idea of where the darkest shadows of the face would be, so I continued to deepen those areas with the same color inks, but less water mixed in. Okay, here we are at the first major departure from the original sketch. 
The neck and the chest tattoos looked amazing in the sketch, but with the collage papers now in the mix, it was going to look way too busy. So I decided to go with something darker that would contrast with the collage papers, but also have a more uniform pattern with gold to emphasize her goddess stature. This was a challenging phase because I really wasn't sure if I liked anything that I was doing, and I cursed that gold pen more than once because it would just cease to excrete gold periodically, which annoyed me greatly. And here I am, still trying to figure out what to do with the neck and the chest area. This was a frustrating time for me, so I decided to move on to my next challenge, the stained glass. It took me a while to figure out how I was going to get the stained glass to be the shape that I needed it to be in order to glue it down onto the canvas, and then all of a sudden my grandmother's voice came into my head and said, it's like a costume pattern. So I took a spare piece of rice paper and I traced all of the squares onto that and then I used a graphite transfer paper and traced it onto the collage paper and cut out the exact sizes that I needed which thank you nanny for being a seamstress and making costumes most of my life because that really that really saved me a lot of trouble in figuring out how I was going to do that. I then went on to painting the hair with the hope that she wouldn't start to resemble Wonder Woman again which is how I felt during the sketch but alas it happened. This would have to be remedied when I started painting on the easel after the rest of the papers were glued on and had dried completely. The other thing that I wanted to do was I couldn't decide whether or not I wanted to use gold leaf on the spaces in between the stained glass so I just used an acrylic marker that was kind of like this goldish color to see if I liked it. I ended up going with black between those because it actually contrasted better and you were able to see it and it went better with the black edges. So the next day I went on to using golden open acrylics in order to do the portrait part of this painting. However, I did not film that I put a layer of liquid matte medium over the entire painting before I went to bed the night before to knock back some of the absorbency of the watercolor canvas because I wasn't sure how the golden open acrylics would perform on the watercolor canvas. This worked really, really well. I'm not sure how it would have been if I didn't do that, but I definitely would do it in the future because I th think it did help. And the golden open acrylics are great because you can blend a lot easier with them than you can with regular acrylics. So what I'm basically doing here is I'm just doing skin tones um, and I'm using some grays mixed in with some of the pinker skin tones and just trying to figure out mapping out really where I want colors to be. And um, the golden open acrylics are great for that because like I said you do have the blendability that you don't have with regular acrylics. Now here's the part where I was so desperate to make it look like it wasn't Wonder Woman. I know that some people will say it doesn't look like Wonder Woman, but to me, the hairline, I think, was what was making it look like Wonder Woman, and it was really bugging me. And so I decided that I would put some curls kind of coming down the side of the face. I wanted to change the... I didn't want her to have that circlet so much as maybe having some sort of, like, almost crown, um on her head so I did go about changing certain parts of her hair and making it not black so that it didn't look so much like Wonder Woman giving her some curls making her look more like a Greek goddess um, than a superhero so yeah I think it worked really well and I was able to do all of this with the golden open acrylics as well um, I knew that I was going to finish the painting with oils because I always like to refine with oils. So after I would basically let all of the golden open acrylics dry overnight and then I would start in with oils the next day. So I did decide that the blue worked really well for this part of the painting because it kind of um, matches the blue that's in the stained glass part of it. So the leaves going up the sides 
obviously are um, a symbol of Apollo and Artemis and they were brother and sister and I thought it might be cool if I did the actual leaves with gold leaf so I did that with the open acrylics and then had to let that dry completely so that took about an hour before I could apply the adhesive for the gold leaf and then this I'm just basically doing a bunch of different brush strokes in order to make this kind of look like a crown but sometimes the less detail that you put into um, a certain part of a painting the m the more realistic it looks or the it just goes with the painting better so here I am messily applying my 24 karat gold leaf to this and I was just able to do it while it was on the canvas and I think I would do it like this again um, I found this really really cool thing which was a metal adhesive pen and it was by speedball highly recommend it so the next day I went on to oil paint and I'm basically just doing um, the oil paint on the face and maybe a little bit of glazing in other parts of the painting but the rest of the painting I did not put any oil paint on because I didn't think that it needed it definitely not on the collage papers or on any other part of it for the most part just on her face and a little bit in her hair um, to create a little bit of shadow here and there but the oil paints I'm pretty much following the same palette as I did with the golden open acrylics and here we have the completed painting of Artemis in the goddess series and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I love you guys and I will see you next time bye